Hello, Mark Dawson here, Senior Editor at Bloomberg Live and Editorial Director of the Qatar Economic Forum. We're heading to the Middle East now for the view from Qatar, and we're honored to be joined by Sheikh Ali Al Walid Al Thani, who is CEO of the Investment Promotion Agency of Qatar. And he's in charge of encouraging international business to invest in Qatar. It is, of course, a huge year for Qatar with the FIFA World Cup only 11 months away in December. Uh, but before that, Sheikh Ali, uh, keen for your view now in January, uh, Omicron is still with us. How is the virus impacting your business and investment outlook for the year ahead? Well, uh, thank you, Mark, and it's a pleasure uh, to be with Bloomberg uh, looking at the year ahead. And as you mentioned, currently all eyes are centered on the post-pandemic recovery, uh, economic prospects, diverge uh, across countries and regions. We think that there's two main determinants for how uh, different countries are, are progressing. Uh, first is fiscal support during the pandemic, and the second is the vaccination uh, progress. Now, you know, when you come back to the Middle East, Middle East and North Africa, uh, the region is expected to accelerate uh, growth to around 4.4% in terms of GDP. Uh, to Qatar, I mean, when we look at those two uh, determinants, we have uh, certainly outperformed uh, the region. Uh, vaccination is at around 90% uh, of uh, eligible uh, adults. Uh, fiscal support has been uh, strong uh, throughout the pandemic. Qatar maintains a very strong uh, fiscal position uh, relative to uh, GDP growth, and that's due to a number of, of different uh, headwinds including the, the commodities uh, uh, super cycle uh, that we're now in. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so about if, if we had this conversation in November, I would have been coming to you from Hong Kong. Uh, I'm now in New York. Obviously, uh, America and Hong Kong, very different approaches to the virus. Uh, in the US, we're talking about learning to live with the virus. Is, is that something that Qatar is uh, looking at? Definitely. I mean, uh, we, we believe now that we're heading towards a more kind of endemic phase. Uh, the tools that we have are different uh, than before. Uh, economic prospects uh, continue to, to normalize. Uh, and we believe that the transition to an endemic phase uh, or so-called endemic phase uh, can uh, trigger the investment appetite accelerate uh, business activities, uh, heading towards pre-pandemic levels while maintaining the secular trends such as digitization, uh, supply chain resiliency, and, and localization. Uh, Qatar is maintaining its drive uh, towards economic diversification and greater private sector participation uh, in these efforts. Good. Um, has your strategy changed uh, now that we're approaching an endemic uh, sort of outlook? Has, has your strategy changed in the past few months or is it the same? Has your strategy been the same these past two years? Well, look, our organization, like all uh, investment promotion agencies, has to adapt, adapt in terms of strategy. Uh, first, in terms of maintaining a business continuity that was in uh, 2020 to 2021 uh, towards uh, reopening uh, and also in terms of targeting uh, new sectors uh, uh, in the economy, the growth of the digital economy, such as software development, data centers, cloud computing, ICT, uh, digital health, artificial intelligence, and uh, machine learning. You know, these are new sectors uh, for FDI uh, promotion. The favorable business environment, availability of skills and talent in the region, we see that as being a, a lucrative uh, value proposition uh, for Qatar. Uh, uh, despite, I mean, the, the challenges of the pandemic, I mean, we see uh, these sectors continue to drive the, the knowledge economy, our non-hydrocarbon uh, portion of the GDP, which uh, sits at 50%, is maintaining uh, that proportion despite the, the high uh, hydrocarbon prices. So there is, uh, quite a few, uh, you know, headwinds, uh, including the World Cup uh, by the end of the year, uh, Qatar's uh, economic diversification uh, uh, efforts, and as well as a new commodity super cycle that we look 
uh, towards uh, accelerating our growth in terms of uh, attracting FDI. Mm. So you mentioned uh, hydrocarbons and tech there. Um, are there maybe give me give me your top three sectors? Um, is is there a, a that you're targeting for investing in Qatar? Is there a um, particular sectors that you're targeting? Yeah. Definitely, I think you know there's a, a number of new emerging uh, sectors and a number of sectors that are more kind of traditional in nature. So agritech uh, is a new area uh, that uh, Qatar is uh, currently uh, witnessing uh, a significant uh, uh, growth in uh, industry 4.0, such as technology, electric vehicles, uh, automation, uh, professional services, and media, sports, which is not only limited to the World Cup but also uh, other uh, large uh, scale sports events uh, such as the Formula One, the 2030 Asian Games, uh, and also the growth of uh, sports uh, tech uh, as a sector within Qatar. Tourism and hospitality have seen uh, significant growth uh, coming into kind of the post pandemic uh, uh, phase. Uh, and also now with the ESG and the circular economy. So many opportunities uh, around these sectors uh, which we look to promote. Ag Agritech, uh, obviously key uh, to Qatar's self-sustainability. Obviously, we're, we're all friends now in the region um, from the embargo and uh, blockade that was uh, in the past. Is that self-sustainability um, still a key driver of, of what you're doing? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, resilience, uh, or resiliency is the overall theme of the Qatari economy. I mean, and this uh, is evident. I mean, we witnessed the Qatari economy withstand uh, external shocks uh, time and time again. Uh, from a, a logistics point of view, from diversifying our supply chain, and from a, a, a self kind of sustainability, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, point of view. Uh, all these uh, have. Uh, you know, contributed to building resiliency within Qatar. This we view as uh, a value proposition uh, in itself, and we continue to promote that part of our economy as part of the uh, the economic uh, diversification efforts uh, that Qatar has undertaken. So, World Cup in December, um, not that far away. I think we're the infrastructure is ready. Uh, we're all looking forward to it. Um, in your area. How, uh, how much do you think the World Cup is going to benefit you? I mean, the, the overall benefits to the economy is, is in the billions, but in terms of businesses coming into Qatar, hopefully uh, post-World Cup, um, is, is there a number that you're, you're targeting or envisioning? Yeah, de definitely the World Cup uh, is, a, is an impetus for growth, uh, not only in terms of FDI, also in terms of, of tourism, of putting Qatar uh, on the map, uh, in, in terms of sports, in terms of events, uh, hosting large-scale events, and I mean to showcase uh, uh, Qatar as a destination, as a place to live and work. Uh, this is an opportunity, uh, and we believe that we are well positioned to to benefit from hosting uh, such an event uh, in Qatar. Now, uh, all the the coverage uh, of the World Cup, unfortunately, not all of it's positive. Um, I mean, there's reports that. Uh, certain teams might be uh, protesting on, on the pitch or things like that. Do you think um, these uh, events, the, these sort of protests perhaps might have, might scare away potential investors? How, how are we preparing for that? No, we, we welcome, I mean, uh, uh, scrutiny uh, to a certain degree. And we believe, I mean, the, the increased spotlight on Qatar leads to greater uh, reforms. Uh, so we've seen Qatar reform its labor system. That in itself uh, led to a, a greater retainment of talent within Qatar. Uh, so, I mean, you know, greater spotlight, greater uh, scrutiny. We all believe that to continue to benefit uh, Qatar's value proposition. Uh, Qatar has always been open uh, to, uh, to this debate and we've taken uh, comments into account. We've adapted, we've changed laws. We've reformed uh, our uh, our regulatory environment, so uh, we see, I mean, that as uh, as a positive thing uh, in the long run. Okay, so the uh, World Cup, we're seeing countries from all around the world come come to Doha. And uh, with regards to your strategy, are, are there particular 
areas, regions that you uh, are particularly focused on? Um, Asia, is Asia a number one target compared to Western companies being number two? And is, is with regards to geography, what's your uh, strategy? Yeah, generally, I mean, we are uh, geographically uh, agnostic in terms of you know, tracking FDI. But when you look at the numbers, most of uh, investment uh, into Qatar uh, comes from, from the US and Europe. Uh, the US remains as Qatar's single largest uh, foreign investor at around 100 billion uh, FDI uh, stock. Uh, so, uh, you know, that has traditionally been uh, the, the region where most of our, our FDI uh, originates from. Now we've seen growth as well, especially in, in Southeast Asia, um, from uh, South Asia as well. Uh, so that uh, segment is starting to get more diversified. Uh, and uh, we look to promote, uh, you know, in our strategic markets, being the US, Europe, Southeast Asia, and China. And there are many sectors uh, that we look to promote within Qatar that complements uh, this uh, geographic uh, approach. With, with the US as your uh, number one partner, uh, investment partner at the moment, it, does that impact your China strategy um, with the gas of investment? No, I think, I mean, there are, you know, a, a number of opportunities, uh, both uh, towards, uh, I mean, different geographies. So we don't uh, see uh, really a, a large uh, impact. I mean, Qatar is a, is a fairly an open, uh, you know, and uh, liberal uh, economy. Uh, we welcome investments uh, from all regions in all sectors, even though we prioritize certain sectors based on, on, on our own kind of uh, development agenda. So uh, Qatar, I mean, we welcome everyone. Good. Um... So obviously there's, there's uh, even though, as we said, uh, we're all friends now in the region, but there's now still some healthy competition, uh, which is great uh, with regards to uh, Riyadh, Dubai, Doha uh, and broader Qatar. So if, um, how do you pitch Western companies that might be saying to you, you know, I'm thinking about Riyadh, I'm thinking about Dubai, what's, what's Qatar's uh, USP? What, what's your pitch? Yeah, look, I mean, we, we do not, I, uh, you know, look unfavorably towards like regional competition. We believe that growth in the region uh, benefits Qatar, and uh, you can see that in other areas. Uh, uh, you know, we do not exist in a vacuum. So, if the UAE grows economically, uh, Saudi Arabia grows economically, that benefits us in the in the long term. Uh, Qatar has a strong and resilient uh, economy. We've shown that uh, from a, our strong fiscal position which will continue to outperform uh, our GDP growth. And we're looking to maintain that. Uh, and that would be at the forefront of, of the GCC uh, forecast with around uh, 4% uh, GDP growth uh, in, uh, in 2020 and 5.7% uh, uh, in 2022. Uh, and that is uh, from the recent uh, World, uh, IMF uh, report. Uh, Qatar is the second most competitive economy in the GCC, the second in terms of economic freedom in the Arab world, and the fourth, fourth highest uh, uh, GDP uh, per capita uh, globally. We have a, a very business friendly uh, environment. Uh, we represent a strategic launch pad for businesses uh, from Qatar to the world being uh, connected at a gateway uh, between East and West, strong connections to markets in Africa and Asia, strong investment protection ties uh, globally, the world's best airline and airport. So connectivity, knowledge, innovation, business friendly uh, environment, that is our strong points. And uh, I would like to highlight uh, that. So yeah, we've got uh, 30 seconds left. So I'm, I'm gonna see if you can um, give, us a, give us a scoop. Who's, who's going to be signing um, post post World Cup, who who do you think is going to be signing deals with with you? Who's uh who's going to be the first to sign a deal investing in Qatar? Well, look, I mean, we uh, we we announce them uh, as they reach uh, fruition. I would just state that our pipeline is strong going into 2022. Uh, we have a number of uh, secular uh, headwinds. Uh, such as uh, you know the the growth in the the hydrocarbon uh, uh, sector, uh, 
uh, Qatar's uh, north field expansion uh, would lead to significant uh, growth and other investment opportunities. Uh, new uh, legislative reforms, uh, such as the PPP law, uh, greater private sector participation, and also effective uh, government uh, incentives and economic management. We believe that would be the impetus uh, for, for greater FDI growth uh, going into 2022 and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Sheikh Ali, for your outlook on the year ahead. And you can hear more from the Middle East and the view from Qatar later this year. Uh, stay tuned later this year for the second Qatar Economic Forum, powered by Bloomberg, this June 20th to 22nd in Doha. Sheikh Ali, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all for joining us for this edition of the year ahead. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. And thanks again to all of our speakers for such a wonderful program. And thank you to our presenting sponsors, Wholesome and Invest Promotion Agency Qatar, and our presenting knowledge partner, McKinsey & Company. If you'd like more information from our sponsors, please visit the resources tab on your screen. And most of all, thank you for being such an engaged audience. You can rewatch any part of this event on BloombergLive.com to view it on demand. And thank you for watching. We'll see you again at the next one.